Hi, this is Mrs. Stoops, and this is one of the PowerPoints that I would use in my um, chemistry class for Chapter 1, the section on matter and its properties. So I'm going to walk through this um, PowerPoint with you, and I will give you additional facts and explanations for the information that's provided in these uh, notes that I've used in the past. So this uh, section is Chapter 1 on matter and its properties, and the first uh, set of information is matter. Matter um, is defined as anything that has mass and takes up space and um, everything in nature is matter anything that you can physically see and even the things you can't see um, that have both mass and space are matter so pretty much everything you can look around and see um, you can give examples things like a pencil a piece of paper a desk they are all made of matter um, mass is the measure of that amount of matter. We often uh, use matter and weight as interchangeable, but um, in physics they're not the same thing. And then volume is the amount of three-dimensional space that an object occupies. So uh, think of it as length times width times height, that is volume. All right. Uh, the basic building blocks of matter are atoms, elements, and compounds, and one lends itself to the other. Uh, atoms are the the most smallest part of any element that is the um, maintains the properties of that element and you can't break atoms down any more uh, and still retain the um, the properties of that element so if you go further in uh, reducing the size beyond an atom you no longer have a complete thing um, atoms are elements we have um, 110, 114 elements on the periodic table, um, and each one is a different type of atom. They all have a, a pure makeup. They they cannot be broken down into smaller states. They are stable for the most part, and like I said, they're made up of one atom. Now, if you put multiple elements together, you form a compound, and a compound is a substance that can be broken down into simpler, stable substances, and each compound is made up of atoms of two or more elements that are chemically bonded. So a compound, the key thing here is that you have them chemically bonded. All right, so you can have some physical properties and physical changes. A physical property is a characteristic that can be a, an observed or measured without changing the identity of the substance. So in a, a physical property, when you measure it or look at it, the substance hasn't changed. Um, you're still the same thing. If you do the melting point of iron, you went from iron solid to iron liquid. The boiling point of water just means that you went from liquid water to gas water. If you um, measure its um, the element's hardness or malleability, you still have the same element. You just measured how much of the force or a temperature change can be exerted on that element. A physical change is when you change the substance but again you still have the same chemical makeup so grinding cutting melting boiling um, breaking bending they are all physical changes you've changed how it looks but it's still the same substance so a physical change again is a change of state so you can have three different states of matter you can have solids liquids and gas and there is a fourth state of matter it's plasma um, we don't deal with it very often here on earth so it is not um, we don't get into the definition very often now keep in mind I know that you've seen these definitions before the solid state is matter that has definite volume and a definite shape meaning a square cube of sugar is still going to be a square cube of sugar no matter where you put it unless you grind it and then you've changed its, its um, physical shape by exerting another force um, a liquid has a definite volume but it will take the shape of the container so when you pour water into a beaker that's round it'll be round and when you pour water into a beaker that's a square it'll be a square and the gas a gas state has no definite volume and it has no definite shape the gas will take on the shape of the the container so if you put the gas into a balloon it'll be round and if you put the gas into a room it'll fill up and take the shape of the room which is usually square or rectangle and the volume changes depending on the container so the same amount of gas that I put in a small balloon might be one liter or if I put it into a room it might be a hundred liters plasma is defined as having a high temperature 
um, a physical state of matter in which atoms lose most of their electrons and particles that make up the atoms. So it doesn't really sound like the other three definitions, and it is very different. All right, so we talked about physical properties and physical changes. Here's the other end of the spectrum, the chemical property and a chemical change. A chemical property relates to the substance's ability to undergo changes that transform it into a different substance. So how well does it change into something else? Um, so is it flammable? Can we burn it? Is it, um, does it react with an acid? Those are chemical properties. A chemical change is one in which um, one or more substances are converted into something different. A chemical change is also known as a chemical reaction, which is what uh, um, chemistry students study most often as they, they test different behaviors of reactions and um, different behaviors of elements. So some key words to know about a chemical change is you have reactants and you have products. And so reactants are the things that go into the reaction and a product is the thing that comes out of reaction. So here we have a chemical equation and you have reactants here on the left and you have products here on the right. And so in this example it says carbon plus oxygen yields or forms carbon dioxide so the yields or forms is like the equals in a chemical or in, a, in the equation like if it were a math equation so in this one we're doing a chemical equation so we have an arrow that indicates that's our equals that indicates something changed into something else so our reactants are on the left and in this case we had carbon and oxygen and our products are on the right and that's carbon dioxide so we would take this a step further as we study further into chemistry and we're going to learn how to write these in symbol form and then do some interesting things with these equations. Here is a graphic that um, illustrates evidence of when a chemical change has occurred. So there are four uh, different types of chemical change indicators as shown in this picture. The first one on the left, letter A, is um, they're mixing acetic acid, which is vinegar, and sodium hydrogen carbonate, sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. And when you mix baking soda and vinegar, a lot of you know that it makes bubbles and it, it, it's a liquid. So anytime that you form bubbles or gas, that is evidence of a chemical change because you've changed the acetic acid, the vinegar, and you've changed the baking soda into a new solution and you've released carbon dioxide. Letter B here is forming a precipitate. If you notice the uh, graduated cylinder pouring into the beaker, they both are clear liquids with no color and when you've mixed them you've formed a yellow solid. Forming a precipitate is when you mix two liquids together to form a solid. They're not always yellow. Um, this one is pretty spectacular, but uh, anytime you put two liquids together and you make a solid, that's forming a precipitate. And in this example, they have sodium sulfide and cadmium nitrate making um, cadmium sulfide, which is a yellow solid. Letter C is showing you light and it's also heat. So anytime that you react something and it, it burns, it shows a flame, um, it shows a white bright light um, and it gets hot, that's your third indicator of a chemical change, heat and light. And then um, a color change is the last indicator, letter D here, so they have added phenolphthalein and you can barely see in that flask that it is a very pale pink, that's why they have it sit, sitting over top of the white paper so that you can see that you have changed from a colorless solution to a pink solution and what they're showing you there would be probably a titrate. All right, so let's look at some of the um, different types of change here. We have energy always is involved when you have a physical or a chemical change occurs. So let's say we're melting that ice. We need to put heat into it to make the ice melt. Um, a chemical change always uses uh, energy or gives off energy. It's always involved. You can see energy as heat or light. And remember, energy cannot be absorbed, I'm sorry, energy cannot be destroyed or created and that is because we follow the law of conservation of energy. Think of the law of conservation of energy as one big cosmic recycling project. The energy that we use in a reaction um, goes into something else and then we'll use that new product maybe to release some energy and do another job. So the energy doesn't disappear, it just changes where it's being stored.
okay it is absorbed or released so we are constantly using energy you cannot destroy it you do not make energy you just use it and store it in different places all right a couple other words about matter um, we can classify matter first of all we were classifying it as solid liquid gas we were classifying it as a physical or a chemical substance um, we can also classify matter as a mixture now when we have a mixture we have multiple things put together but they're not chemically combined so you have a blend of two or more types of matter and they still retain their own properties um, mixtures are easy to describe in everyday life things like pizza you put lettuce I'm sorry not pizza salad you put lettuce tomatoes cheese croutons whatever it is that you like in your salad all together and um, you can still taste a tomato you can still taste the carrot they are not changed by being in the salad bowl okay um, so you have two different types of mixture. You can have homogeneous mixtures, which are also known as solutions, and you can have heterogeneous mixtures, which um, don't have another name. So a homogeneous mixture is uniform in composition. This one is so well mixed and the particles are so evenly matched that you cannot pull them apart easily. Um, an example of a homogeneous mixture would be uh, vanilla ice cream you put milk or cream you put sugar you put vanilla all together you've blended them you can't pull out the milk pieces you cannot pull out the vanilla pieces um, a heterogeneous mixture on the other hand is something like chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream where you have the milk the cream the sugar um, and you have the chocolate chip cookie dough pieces in there we can pull out the chocolate chip cookie dough pieces because they're big enough to see they are not an evenly distributed um, component of that mixture. In fact, you can scoop up a, a bit of the ice cream if it's chocolate chip cookie dough and you can have a whole bunch of chocolate chunks in one spot and maybe none in another spot. So that's not an even distribution throughout. Pure substances are um, used to describe, usually they describe com um, compounds, elements, molecules, things that always have a fixed composition. Um, they when you pick up salt you always expect to pick up salt which is NaCl when you pick up sugar you always expect to pick up the same thing so C6H12O6 if you're picking up uh, glucose and if you're picking up sucrose you would look for C12H22O11 um, that is a pure substance it always has a uniform composition it's always the same one it's exactly the same characteristics or properties and um, it has the same composition every time you get it water in this on this slide is an example of um, a pure substance it is 11.2 percent hydrogen and 88.8 percent .8 oxygen by mass all right so uh, we have made our way the whole way through matter and its properties um, there were a lot of vocab words in this section my suggestion would be if you miss something go back and replay it um, look at the slides again maybe listen to the dialogue that I've offered you if you have further questions make sure you ask me or email me um, and there will be additional resources also provided for you to look over